This is Dabu 7. I've been reporting on all these plants that have gone up in flames or exploded, affecting the food processing and distribution in our country here within the past year and a half. Well, when you add in also that there's a super drought and that farmers are not getting crops into the ground, this isn't good. Now, another reason that they're not getting crops into the ground is because of higher gas prices. And just looking at a state like Pennsylvania, we have the farmers there saying that they have everything hooked up, they're ready to go, but they cannot afford the diesel for their tractors, for their equipment, to be able to put the corn and the crops in the ground. So it's a grim situation. And it looks like this is going to push food prices higher. I mean, the government just came out and reported that food prices in May were 10% higher than this time last year. So they have two big hurdles ahead of them. Number one, they've got to be able to put all the crops in the ground. And number two, they got to be able to afford to take it out. And in Pennsylvania right now, the average for diesel is six nineteen per gallon, up 75%. From a year ago. That's 75% from a year ago. That's a huge, huge expense, these farmers are saying. And one farmer that works around 3,500 acres says he goes through around 2,000 gallons of diesel per month. If the farmers cannot get the crops out of the ground, there's going to be no food on the shelves. Those are the warning words coming from them and these are all repercussions of higher gas prices that we're seeing right now. As I covered on the live stream, we just saw a record between where mid-grade and high-grade sit. It was like 62 cents. So join me for those live streams. I've got links below. Hit that subscribe button for more. This has been Dabu7. I want to start off first things first, giving all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Raha Kadash, Pedal Hebrew tongues, creating every heavenly father, son of the Holy Spirit, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to you, sisters and brothers, letting this truth, and Shalom to the brothers and sisters listening and standing to show themselves approved. Shalom. Now, as you just heard from the Edomite whistleblower, Nabu 77. That the farmers of Pennsylvania are having a hard time keeping up with the rising diesel prices in order to produce food. So what's that going to lead to? All this is leading to that great famine that Yahweh Bashmiah Shah promised that we hit the land, particularly Babylon the Great, because this place has always been abundant with food. Now these Babylonians going to know what it's like, you know, in these third world countries to go without food, and it's coming in quickly. Yeah, how about your shots ushering in more quickly? Because he's using Edomites to usher it in. And they're all moving, you know. Because they ain't got to make gas prices that high. They can lower it down if they wanted to. But they're making it high because the elites right now are on schedule to collapse the system. Because they have to hurry up and institute their global reset. And they have to, you know, put people in a hard way to force them into getting into the system. And how they're going to force you is by taking away the food and it's coming in hard and it's coming in quickly and you see as we just watched the whistleblower you know there's a little eat of my whistleblower you know esau know what's coming the elites is ushering in the working class edomites they're you know trying to you know prepare and get their stuff together for you know the offset what's about to happen and as i look the people that's not paying attention or even talking about it or even seeing it coming is your two-third Jakes. Y'all sure are the two-thirds. They don't they don't see it. You either got one half of them, the two-thirds, that's like bumping their head against the wall trying to figure out what's going on. Then you got the other half partying like it's 1999. They don't even care to know what's going on. And it's like, Jake was trouble. This fame is going to hit Jake the hardest because Jake's not been, Jake ain't preparing for it. Esau is preparing for it. Esau see it coming. Esau in doom and gloom. Esau know a great fame is coming. They know hard times are coming. So Esau is, you know, preparing themselves. They're getting themselves positioned to offset this onslaught. Jake is not doing that. Jake don't know 
Jake going like it's business as usual. Jake is just <laughs> totally oblivious. And that's see Jacob's that's why it's called Jacob's trouble. Jake gonna be in the most trouble when this thing hit. And I mean it's hitting so hard that they're even putting these themes in the movies. Like I went to go see that Jurassic Park movie, and that was the whole plot of the movie. They made some genetic modified locusts that was eating up all the crop. Some prehistoric uh grasshoppers, you know, basically. And I'm like, they put in the movie, they telling you all the way around, telling you entertainment. The whistleblowers are saying it. They're telling you the mainstream news. There's going to be a food shortage. So Jake, out of prepare, but they're not going to do that. And really, the best way to prepare for this is get your button is true. So let's go read an article, man. They, they hitting on the crops and they're hitting on, you know, the meat to so check this out. This says shocking footage of thousands of dead cows emerged during Kansas heat wave. So shocking footage of thousands of dead cows has emerged on TikTok during the intense Kansas heat wave. The TikTok video posted by Barbie Doll Henderson 1973 shows thousands of cattle lying dead across a ranch. Newsweek could not verify the death was related to the heat wave or where and when the video was taken, but extreme temperatures have been seen across the southeast of the state in recent days. Now look here. My grandpa raises cattle, been raising them ever since I've been a young boy, so I know about cattle. And we've had more extreme heat than this, so them cows didn't die from the extreme heat, so Esau can miss me with that. You know, what I think has happened is, Esau euthanized those cows because the people that have been in this truth, or I can testify this for me, that a couple years back, the government was making ranchers euthanize their cattle and their chickens. So I, I believe they're still doing that. But now, you know, everybody's getting hip to what's going on because we had 97 food plants be destroyed this year. So everybody's getting hip to what Esau doing so now they got to blame it on something else they can't just say oh yeah we made them you know do their cows away because then the people gonna come after them so what they're gonna do is blame it on the heat wave and cows my grandpa raised cattle man we have hotter days than this cows know how to stay by the water and cows know how to stay in the shade cows don't die from heat exhaustion like that them cows run up in that water and put mud on their cells to keep themselves cool cows know how to survive during the heat wave <laughs> And we've had hotter summers than this. So, miss me with that, Esau. Check out. We're going to watch this little video. Get that out the way. You see dead cows. Everywhere. 3,000 of them. That's a lot of meat. That's a lot of money. A lot of food gone. A lot of hamburgers gone. That's going to lead to the tribute to the family that you're talking about, man. He's not playing no game. He making Esau, he's putting on Esau's heart to bring this family in. And it's coming in. Ain't no, I don't think it's going to happen. We're going we to make it come back. No, no, no. This thing is coming hard to Look at that. Dead cow. Food gone, so you know, you you read that up if you want to, but I'm gonna get we gonna get to the scriptures now, cause that fame is coming, and see when this fame is coming, it's gonna be that get right, you know, it's gonna make Jake, it's gonna really get everybody's attention, you know, it's gonna make all that BS stop, all that that proudness, you know, I'm grinding around, I'm getting it, I got the, the jewelry on my neck, my drip is out of control, all that coming to an end, man. That ain't gonna matter your stomach touching your back, especially when the dollar crash, you know. When the dollar crash, nobody gonna be worried about no money, you know, or how much bling you got, how big your mansion is. Ain't nothing to worry about that. Everybody gonna worry about the real important things. Do you got food? Do you got clean water? Do you got shelter? That's what's gonna matter in a minute. <laughs> and so check it out. This is Psalms 105 and 16. Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land. He break the whole staff of bread. And who was that? That's Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah is orchestrating this famine. And he's breaking that staff of bread, man. You got the Kansas, the bread basket of the world. 
was a lot of crop done died in Kansas. And you see now a lot of cattle is dying in Kansas. So that's where a lot of food is processed, man, in the Midwest, Texas to the Midwest. So, hey, all that is gone. That's done with. And then, like, like I said, I've been to Kansas lately, riding to Wichita, and I've seen all that dead crop. So it, it is happening. It is going down. And then you got Pennsylvania. You got farmland all over the world struggling off the high diesel. The gas prices is making it hard. And then, like, now, since Russia and Ukraine is at war, and Russia makes all the fertilizer. They say the U.S. ain't got that much fertilizer like that no more. So that's going to lead to more, you know, a lesser crop yield. So that famine is coming, man. It's coming to this country. You know, this country going like a third world country. You got people fleeing to Mexico to get food, which is straight hypocrisy, man. They talk, Esau talks so bad about the northern tribe. Now you want to go to their country and get some food. How crazy is that? That's how you know this place is over with. And then the cartels gonna pick them off, you know? It ain't wise to go to Mexico, man. Them cartels getting busy. It's the reason why they trying to come here. <laughs> Dumb people. So check it out right there, man. Hey, you ain't got don't take any deep in-depth analysis to break that precept down, man. The most high call for fame upon the land. This is their judgment. I mean, how about your shot? A lot of people, you about to starve them out. The most high about to say, the fear of the Lord is about to be in this place. It's about to be on this land. Everybody all proud, partying, you know, like a rock star. And, you know, worried about Missy Alien stuff. Like what bathroom to go to and what you identify as. Hey, the most high about to make reality set in, man. The first thing going to do is take away their comfort, which is what Babylonians find comfort in their food. Take that away. Hey, then, then it's going to get real out here, you know. Little Pookie and Ray Ray, little gangster niggas think they are so hard, so cold out. We're going to see when the system get pulled out from under your feet. What you going to do then? You know, you're going to go out to Esau and, and get what you need? You're going to be able to go to Esau? You know, Jake only good at taking out other Jakes. And then see, they not prepared. Little Pookie and Ray Ray's ain't put nothing back extra. They ain't really, you know, in a good position. They ain't served the Lord. You know, so they ain't about to reap. None of the bitter fence the Lord about to promise out, which he promised salvation, and he promised that you should eat, you know, during the famine, which I want to say Isaiah chapter 65 lets you know that. So they they not they not ready, man. And they slapped it down. They like we didn't tell them you wasn't warned. They heard the warning, they didn't take heed to it. They like, uh-uh. Esau system is so great. Esau system was unbeatable. Like we always gonna have food. Esau system always continue, man. Yeah, how about your shop putting a stop to that? Like, man, let me show you something. Watch this. Man, it was so great about it. He using them to crash it down. That's why the, the two thirds really looking dumb. Cause Esau, he the one bringing in the faming. He bringing it in. You know, how about your shop putting on the wicked people that he created on their spirit to bring in what he wants, which is their faming, man. That's what I say. Esau gonna put a lot of two-thirds of death. And, and rightly that's so they deserve it. Because that's who they put their trust in. So the most high right there said he go break the staff of bread, which goes into food. Because the Lord is a man of war. Blockade the siege, man. He, he got a righteous anger towards Babylon the Great. And now we're in the time of her judgment. So the first thing he's gonna do. Is block off that supply chain, man. Take that food supply away. Make these people, you know, make their people malnourished. Make them hungry. You know, bring that destruction through that. That chaos, that confusion. It's really going to be some confusion. When ain't no oodles and noodles at the grocery store. So check it out, man. We're going to go to the next one. To prove that you have a shot called call the famine in these days. And that's how he going to get the world's attention. You check it out, this is Matthew 24 and 7. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. For there should be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. So right there, he said nation versus nation, man. That's going into nationalities, races. You know, you're going to see Jake versus Esau. Esau versus Esau. Esau versus Ishmael, which is your Arabs, Middle Easterns. Esau versus Moab, which is your Asians. You're going to see Hamites versus Ishmaelites. Hamites is your Africans, man. You're about to see race wars 
you know, pop off in a major way. Especially Esau gonna be looking for Jake. They already thirsty for Jake's blood. I can already see it in their face right now. When I go to the plantation, when I just go out and about, you can just see it. It's about to happen. Then it said, kingdom against kingdom. That goes into these uh these countries. You know, Russia versus uh Ukraine. Russia versus the European countries. China versus European countries. China versus the U.S. China versus Taiwan. The U.S. versus, you know, Russia and, and China and, and uh, all the European countries, you know. It's about to be all out war. Iran about to jump in. North Korea. Man, it's been World War Three. We on the doorstep of that. And then World War Three kick off. China say, I'm shipping nothing else to America. That's it. No more goods to America. Hey, America really going to be hurting because America get all their stuff from China. <laughs> I said, this thing right here is about to, man, this thing is about to be crazy when it pop off. And, hey, we got to give all praise and glory to you. How about y'all shot that we in this truth? Because the people don't have the cover of the Lord, they is not going to make it. This thing is going to be so drastic. <coughs> so lucky. And it said famous, man. Because once, like, all these countries quit trading with each other, it's going to lead to great hunger. You know? A lot of these countries can't sustain they, they sales. They depend on foreign trade to get their goods in. So you're going to see a lot of things stop, which is going to stop, you know, the agriculture here, which is going to lead to that famine. Then pestilence, you know, you saw already he going haywire, throwing out pestilences, you know, left and right, trying to compromise people's health. So they'll, you know, take that global reset or can't fight back, you know, trying to put people to death. And it's said earthquakes in diverse places. That goes into... Physical earthquakes, and it also goes into uproars of the people. Because when people, you got like 20,000 people in the streets riding, man, that's going to gonna sound like an earthquake. Especially if you got like 100,000 people riding. That's them earthquakes in diverse places. That's going to happen too. As gas goes to like $10 a gallon, and the food shelves come up short, you're going to see people riding. Like, it's going to be a Black Lives Matter ride times 100. You're going to see about 200,000 people, maybe in a million people, man. Hey, storming Hall of D.C., where all the politicians is at, yanking them out. Like, hey, man, you sold us out. You put us in a bad way. They're going to be storming the police stations. <laughs> I said, hey, you do not want to be an institution when the people get mad and figure, you know, you done sold us out. Man, I can't eat. My job is gone. Or I'm just working this to pay for gas. Man, these people, well, they ain't got nothing else to lose. They're going to attack these establishments. Guaranteed. That's going to be the uproars of the people. We've already seen it. They was fighting them lockdowns. Wait till Esau try to pull some more unrighteous decrees. Man, the people about to get busy. And they ain't going to be out there throwing rocks in Babylon the Great. They're going to be out there with their modern day swords, which is the guns. So we about to see a lot of bloodshed. And what's going to lead to that lot of bloodshed? The fame in. When you start people out, they're going to get their modern day swords and they're going to go out and hunt and attack and take what they feel is theirs. They're going to hit these uh food distrib distribution places, man. They about to get ramsacked. It's going down. That is in the near future in Babylon the Great. That's what's about to happen. So for us, hey, we got to feel like, hey, we, we tucked in this truth. Hey, we feel real good. Man, we doing the work. So we're going to sow the righteousness. So Yahweh Bashi Awashia, which uh, my brother Kadar just did a real good lesson, man. A real good lesson I just got through listening to. I, I recommend everybody go see that, too, and watch it. This right here. Shalom. Go watch that, man, because, like, that, that's a real good faith booster, too, because it says you're going to reap what you sow. So for all of us that's in this truth, that's doing this work, hey, we we good. We ain't got too much to worry about, man, because we, hey, we, we, we sowing, you know, good things. We sowing our uh, treasures up in heaven. We're sowing to Yahweh Bashi Shah. That way we reap the protection of Yahweh Bashi Shah. So we ain't a good case. Now, these two-thirds, that's not doing the work or didn't take heed to the warning or talk mess about the prophets hey man it ain't looking good for them because you can see the destruction bubbling up and instead of them getting right getting in the truth they doubling down on their wickedness they doubling down like uh-uh we gonna be okay babylon the great gonna be all right america gonna be great again 
And psh, hey, man, they about to get death, man. They gonna starve to death, get the sword, anything like that. So watch this lesson by my Ak Kadar, man. Real good lesson, man. I liked it, man. The spirit of the Kadash was heavy on that one. You know, real good lesson. Boosted my faith, man. Made me feel good. Like, yeah, I'm doing the right thing. I feel good about my lot. So check it out why I said that. Let me go to, let's go to Matthew chapter 6 as I said that. Because I think what I want is, and I wasn't going to pull it, but it popped in the spirit since I said that. There you go. That's what I want. Uh, Matthew 6 and 19. Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust do corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart also be. So us doing this work, man, doing this work, these video epistles hitting that highway ahead, doing the work of the Lord. Hey, we doing that because we want that tender mercy of your high by shower shy. We want that hedge of protection. And we also want, let me see. Because he gave a promise. I quoted it earlier. Yeah, this is uh, Isaiah 65 and 13. Therefore, saith the Lord, Yahweh, behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. You hear that? That's why we do the work, man. We know this famine is coming. Because Yahweh Bashar Shah promised that this famine would come. So we putting on as the elect and as a servant of Yahweh Bashar Shah doing the service. Because what did he say right there? We just read it. He said that my servant shall eat and my servant shall drink. So we ain't got nothing to worry about this famine, man. We'll put a little bit back to make it through the initial, you know, the little initial craze. When they out shooting and looting and all of that. But, hey, we're going to, it's always like, like, uh. The, the brother Mississippi said, uh, uh, Yahshua Mas, hey, it's down to faith. We're going to be based in our faith. You know, it's going to come down to faith. We're going to believe that Yahweh Shashah is going to feed us. When our food get low, we're not going to panic. we like, man, the Lord going to lead us somewhere, and we're going to eat. Because we're going to look at all the work we put in. We're going to look at, you know, on the high wind hedge. We're going to look at the times, you know, we're going to study the scriptures. We're going to look at the times he done saved us in the past. And we're going to double down on our faith like, man, the Lord going to provide food for me now. This is, this is why I put in the work. So when I be put in this situation, I'm going to trust in the Lord, and the Lord going to come through for me. So that's why we do the work, man. That's why it's very, very vital and important to be in this truth. And you should take that as light. I know some of you just kind of take this thing as if, you know, it's just a fab or something. Or, you know, it's just some, you know, entertainment. Or, or just the lust over brothers that just do a kickback. No, man. This is serious. You need to take this seriously. You need to get the whole testimony, get the truth. Because if you ain't got it, man, the most I'm going to let you starve to death or just let Esau take you out with the sword or another Jake take you out with the sword or whatever the judgment, you know, is in your future. But you need to take this seriously, man. Like, if you're hearing this truth, you you in a, a very good predicament, a very good lot. So I say grow it. You know, get more edified, get more built up. Get all this truth while you can, because you can tell that the work is coming to a close. I can just feel it. Like Esau's about to ban the Bible in a minute. It's going to be banned. And after that, you're going to be stuck with whatever you know. So get this truth while you can. That way, when, when all hell, you know, when all hell break loose, when shit hit the fan, you know, you, you'll be stable. Your mind will be stable, because you're going to be sitting there like, man, the Lord going to take care of me. I'm all right. You know, I'm going to go here, go there, trust on the Lord, pray. And he going to make a way for me. You know, other than the two-thirds, he's going to bug out. Because they ain't got nothing to trust, put their trust in. They ain't got no faith. They don't even know what the hell going on. When this shit hit, they going to be like still trying to, oh, oh, where I go for food? Where I go? Oh, they go to the military. They run over there to the military. Man, they're going to yop them up. I throw them in a the paddy wagon. They don't, two-thirds is way, way behind. They have not a clue what's about to happen. Although they should have one, because like I said, Everybody talking about the food shortage. Everybody talking about the fame and coming. You can see that. I mean, even Stevie Wonder can see this. That's why the scripture said the two thirds are blind. 
Woo! Hey, he, he was hitting on the head, they blind. I'm over here wild at how blind the two-thirds are. Like, woo! Hey, he called y'all sodish and stupid. You sure is. God damn, you stupid. You know? I mean, it just got me wild. I'm just looking at two-thirds like, woo, I'm glad I ain't, like, get to all's lot. Woo, I'm glad the Most High blessed me with wisdom. Because, woo, hey, it ain't about to be good for now. I'm talking about they still ain't got a clue. And we had game time. We ain't close out. We had a nitty-gritty. And they still bumping their head against the wall thinking, you know, I'm going to buy me some crypto and get some Bitcoin. And, man, I'm like, man, that's over with, man. You, you done. So, let me go to this. I'm going to leave off with this right here. Let's go to Psalms, because this is going to be us. Let's go to Psalms 33 and 18. And check it out. This this is a good faith booster. This is Psalms 33 and 18. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death, and to keep them alive in the famine. Did you pee? Let's read that again. To deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in the famine. So that's Psalms 33 and 19. I'm about to etch that in my mind, in my heart, in my spirit. That, you know, when I'm going through a hard time, you know, I ain't ate in two days. I'm not going to bug out. I'm going to remember that those that fear the Lord, you know, we put our hope in his mercy. And he said he would deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in the famine. So that Yahweh Bashasha got us, the hopeful elect that dwell within this truth, that dwell within the house of David. He got us. We got to believe in that. Even if we got to go a couple days with no food. We might go three, four days with no food. You know, don't, don't still, don't break down like, oh man, I got to go run to them and I got to get that thing to eat. No, man. Always disregard that. Never, never bow down and go get, you know, that karagma from Esau. Always shun that. I don't give a damn. You about to feel like you about to starve to death. You know, let that be your lot for you go down and take that damn karagma. Don't take that. It's, it's over with when you take that. Instead, hey, like I said, the Lord, he going to test us all. He going to test us real hard. Let's say it might be a couple days. We might, you know, might not go without some food. You know, might have to go a couple days, let your family eat, and you don't eat. But trust the Lord that he got us, man. That's why I'm glad that he put on my spirit to start fasting before it is hit. That way I know my limits. I'm not going to bug out. I know I can go a couple days without eating. You know, I can, I'll can. i be able to ration better. You know, because I, I know my strength. That's why the Lord makes us fast to strengthen us, man. That's training right there. So I recommend all, you know, the, the Akim, the brothers and sisters to fast for a couple days, man. Just to, you know, get your body ready. Get, get yourself in the system, man. That's training. Because we about to be in them days where food is going to be very, very scarce, man. Like a bag of chips going to be real valuable in the times we coming into. Because this devil, man, they closing up shop all the way. And they going to have all the food hoarded up. And they're going to make it to where you can't get any food unless you take the karagma. Unless you take that stamp. Then they give you some. But if you don't take it, they going to say to hell with you. And that's where we at. And see, if you a two-third... Don't know you how about y'all shot. Don't know you ain't supposed to take the chip or you ain't built up. You going to buckle and you going to take it. Because you going to feel like that's my only way to survive. I got to go to eat for my food. But those of us built up with this faith, we know like, man, stay far away from E, man. You don't only want to see his military. Because they about to do us no good. Like, as soon as the little constitution gets suspended, Esau about to get busy. He about to show the two-thirds he is the devil. He about to use his military to do it. So, with that being said, I hope this has been edifying. It'll quam your astrology to your bubble ball. Inshallah. And keep that faith, y'all, Sharala. Keep the faith.